If you're seeing this video, we're doing this for our Halloween 2022. Our theme is clowns. Check out our previous video as to some of the prep we did. Continuing prep is uh, we're creating our own circus Halloween theme song. Now, I wanted to base this off of a march, American marches. So there's a little cheat sheet I kind of used. I didn't use all the elements, just wanted to do something pretty simple. But I'll post it down in the, in the comments or in the... In the description, I've been a band director since 2009. I've been studying music for, for a pretty long time. So um, this was fairly simple if we just follow some of the basic rules for a march, like modulating keys. We started in the key of B flat, which is also very common for marches. And the reason I also, well, and then later it modulates uh, by adding a flat to the dominant which would be E flat. And I kind of worked it backwards. I wanted it to modulate in E flat for a specific reason. I'll mention it to you in just a little bit. So the first part is in three, four. Now I know that's not a march, but it has more of that carousel carnival feel when it's in three, four, the boom, da, da, boom, da, da. And um, so I started it in B flat, went from one chord to five chord, four chord, five chord, and then repeats back to one. But since I wanted it to be for Halloween, one of the things that was on the little cheat sheet was saying that if it's in a minor key, sometimes it goes to the to the relative major key. And uh, that's kind of what we did. But I, I kind of worked it a little backwards. First, it started in a major key to have the really typical sounding carnival. And then it modulates to a little bit of the the minor key and that was to make you feel at least a little bit like oh this is a regular carnival and then later it has that minor key and they're like oh this might not be a regular carnival so that's one of the reasons i did it there i did this using logic and the three main instruments i used was a drum set that does the regular boom ta ta boom ta ta and i used the detroit garage because it had the most kind of raw uh, sounding sound of it just kind of like it's yeah it's not very tuned up or whatever it's just kind of very basic it's whatever they need to do to perform in their circus and then uh, a studio bass or an upright bass then I had a jazz fusion organ that has the closest sound that I liked to the to the circus sound and then the other one was the dreamy bells for for the melody and the dreamy bells also kind of gives that weird kind of uh, waviness or pitch bending that we would like to make it sound a little creepy. So as it goes through the 3-4 section, it kind of takes a repeat as is typical in a march and that's when we switches to the to the minor sound. Okay, it's the same melody but we sw either shifted the chords over, so for example it's in B flat, you have B flat, D and F. If you, if those are kind of the main notes, if you just add a G below it, G, B flat, D, now it becomes a minor. Or you could have taken it the other way, add it above. You have uh, B flat, D and F originally. If you have D, F and A, you can also make it sound a little more minor. So that's pretty much all we did there. Now, as I mentioned before, it does have a modulation and I purposely wanted it to modulate to E flat. And the reason for that was that I wanted it to have electric guitar and uh, distorted electric guitar. And my electric guitars are usually tuned to E flat, so I wanted to have that the heaviest, lowest possible uh, kind of crunchiness to it. And for that part, it wanted to be more like uh, the typical march, and it was gonna be a fast-paced march, not, not your typical 120 beats per minute. So what I did here was the transition, I think was the BPM was, I want to say it's 180, I don't remember, but from 180, that's the, it goes from 3-4 to 2-4, four, 
and so the 180 still keeps the one two three one two three into straight to two four one two three four one two one two one two one two so it's definitely a faster march and with that fast pace we could take it into kind of something that sounds a little kind of thrash metal that's kind of what i wanted i wanted it almost like chaos just broke loose and everything's kind of going a little bit crazy the chaos builds up a little bit so that section repeats the second time has a little bit uh, just a slight differences um actually only one difference that i can remember actually two now i do remember one of the differences was um a little bit more of a melody in the second guitar not really a melody but a little bit higher pitch of the same thing and just on a single string on a single note instead of a of a chord or power chords and then it does have a a riser which means it will like it's building up to something and then it uh has the the drop back to the regular three four the regular three four beat that we started with and this one this time it did stay modulated so i modulated the whole thing staying in that new e flat and also just to make it a little more interesting we did add um, a new instrument a new little arpeggiated line now on some other creepy bells it does have the original bells in the modulated form plus some creepy higher pitch bells that are above it and then uh, another bass part that kind of doubles the bell part so it kind of has this weird um polarizing effects so where one's kind of super high pitch and the other one's uh, much lower pitch and then uh, pretty much ends and it goes it I just faded out into fade out the drums and you kind of keep the little creepy bell part again and that just echoes on for a little bit and that's pretty much the end so as a quick recap as to what I did for all this to Get your own creepy carnival music first is a three four time signature it really works well to have that that carnival feel uh the corner note was at approximately 180 beats per minute so that's that's pretty fast but if you're just con like we were to conduct it in three it's not too bad it's dividing that by by three that's about 60 beats per minute so that's the that's pretty that's pretty good then i used american march form which is typically flat keys F, B flat, E flat, etc. The form is pretty much A, A, B, A form. It takes the first strain, then repeats it, goes to the trio. I didn't really talk about the trio, but in our case, it switched to the 2 4 section and then back to the A section in a modulated form, which I'll get to in just a second. If you're using a minor key, like in our case, um, it's typical also to do the melody in the relative major or minor, depending on which one you start in the repeated A section. So you have the two A sections. If you're gonna start in major on the repeat, do the relative minor or vice versa. And at the B section, which is pretty much the trio, and ours was the two four, and now you modulate keys by adding a flat, which switches to the subdominant key. I think earlier I mentioned it was a dominant key, but it's the, the subdominant. It'll stay in this key for the remainder of the piece. So once you come back to the A section from the original, from where it started, now you're doing it in the new key. Now something that wasn't uh, in this little cheat sheet that I um, that I did to really help it have that creepy carnival sound is a lot of chromaticism. If you notice at the beginning, it just has a little chromatic line. The bass part also has uh, a few chromatic runs going up or down. The chromaticism really helps it give it that extra feeling of of the circus, kind of a little bit chaotic where it's not really, you're not really sure what's going on. So it has that tension and release and it really helps a lot. One of the last things I wanted to do but didn't do was to add uh, optional sound effects like bicycle horns or just bells or just a, all sorts of chaotic clown stuff. I think this will add a nice personal creepy touch to our, our circus theme if you haven't seen our previous video. Um, that's how we're prepping. It even shows a little bit as to what we did last year. Us and our neighbors really like to... Well, actually, last year was our first time doing it together. We just moved to a new house, our previous house. 
Um, we used to like doing this stuff for Halloween, so um, we're definitely glad that we can keep going this tradition. And even in our neighborhood, uh, some of the neighbors already know uh, what to expect. Uh, check out our playlist. It also has a, a few updates that I add in there that I didn't get to add in that first video, but they're, they're just in YouTube shorts. Anyways, hope you found this useful as to how to create your own creepy march. For a limited time, I will have this track available for free to anyone who subscribes to our to our uh, email list. Uh, so please sign up and you get a free download that you could use for your own Halloween festivities or whatever, especially if you're doing clowns. The next video we'll be doing is, a, is an unboxing of a, of a popcorn machine. So you can't have a circus without popcorn, so we did buy a little popcorn machine that we're going to be giving out popcorn to trick-or-treaters on Halloween night. So make sure to check that out and just stay tuned for anything else we're doing here for, for Halloween. Bye.